So before we start, yep. please uh, state your name and your position within the company mm -hmm. and what the company does, what it's called, mm -hmm. and uh, when it started. Okay. We start now. Okay. So uh, my name is uh, Thorsten Rixman. I am uh, the director of communications at the Obris Group. So it's a, what's the difference between a group and a company? Is it more okay. companies? I say it's more companies. Exactly. Okay, it's more okay. companies. So we have uh, Obris Engineering. So mm -hmm. we do the engineering. Uh, work for the car industry, it means terminal management, for example, developing uh, compressor scrolls, something like that. Uh, the other part is the Obris powertrain. Uh, this, uh, the, the core is to develop a hyper hybrid powertrain for cars, it's a zero hybrid system. Okay. Yeah. And the third part is uh, what we're talking about technologies. This is uh, the in fuel, mm -hmm. which we have seen before. This means this is a, uh, a liquefied sun. Okay. Kind of e methanol, yes. which we will use for our prototypes in the future. Why do you call it e methanol and not just methanol? E methanol, we call it electrified methanol. This means, this means is, uh, we uh, produce the methanol out of the sun energy, we say in the sun belt of this earth. So we have uh, photovoltaic power plants there. Okay, this is, this is at the end, we use the sun energy to, to produce hydrogen, to okay. take out the CO2 of the air, and out of this we produce e methanol. E methanol okay. is a very simple alcohol. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 exactly. So what is the philosophy? Why why are you doing this? What do you think you have to bring to the industry that isn't already in the industry? How do you want to improve the industry? Because I assume your goal is to mm -hmm. advance mm -hmm. powertrain mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what we see is uh, since 25 years we're working on that, and more than 25 mm -hmm. years, we believe that we have to reduce uh, the fossil, to, to burn fossil energy. Okay. Yes. So we have to reduce uh, to find uh, other solutions. So we need to find other solutions. Uh, it's very, very important that we see it on a global scale. Yes. This means that we need to electrify cars, but for that we need to storage the energy and we have to transport the energy. Yes. And with just with energy, electricity, it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, when we see it on a global scale, for, like, for example, like countries in Africa, South America, uh, Russia, for example, we have extremely low temperatures, high temperatures, and no temperature extremes. Much. Temperature extremes, mm -hmm. exactly. So one thing, and the other thing is that you need infrastructure if we would like to reduce the emissions and drive electrified with better electric cars. We need infrastructure for that. So, so, so basically, your view is that currently um, a pure electric vehicle is not the ideal solution. We believe in electric vehicles, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, but we need much smaller batteries. This is one thing, and the other thing is we need to find a solution where the energy comes from for the electrified cars. Um, why did you choose a uh, Tesla to uh, showcase your technology? That's a very good question. Uh, we choose the tech. I noticed Tesla. you also had a Fisker. Yes, I the saw first one car was a Fisker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. the first but then you switched to Tesla. We switched for the prototype for the powertrain cars now. Uh, let's say with a hyper hybrid powertrain, mm -hmm. the first car was a Model 3 and that is yes, now yes. a Model Y. Why do we use a Tesla? We believe that Tesla is the biggest challenge for us because they have a very, very good cars. They have a very good technology behind. So you think they are a leader in the field of EVs? I think they are still a leader. The first decision to use a Model 3 this was in 2018, so this is now three years ago. This is true. In the meantime, there's a little bit of difference because other car producer or manufacturer coming up with a brilliant electrified cars. This is no question. Yes. We use the Tesla. Why? Because we would like to go to Mercedes, to Daimler, to BMW, to, to Toyota. And it's not really good to use a Mercedes. Uh, as this, a prototype car. this brings me to my next question. Okay. Um, how, although maybe I should start. Explain what your technology is first. How, what it, mm -hmm. how it is, what it is. So it's a two-cylinder engine installed in the Tesla's front mm -hmm. that acts mm -hmm. as a generator, mm -hmm. supplying current to a 17.6 kilowatt hour battery, mm -hmm. yeah. which in is the not the original Tesla battery, and it's, it is not comprised right. of Tesla cells. Um, Okay, so that's the system. The system is a zero hybrid. Right. Yeah. Zero, zero. A zero hybrid yes. is very important. And why do we produce zero? Zero hybrid is just another uh, way of saying range extender? Yeah, it, we it, don't it, call it range extender because I, I, a range I, I, extender, for example, for the E3 was to drive electrified until the battery is more or less empty. We yes. have a range extender for 20, 30 kilometers mm -hmm. with the engine. This is not the topic we hear. We have a, a total system. This is uh, built on the battery system and, and the Z4G is this uh, zero vibration generator. This fits extremely strong together with the unit control system yeah, yeah, of the car. This is a big difference in the range extender. Okay, 
Um, I drove, for instance, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Honda Jazz, the new Honda Jazz, the E H E V. It's a strange name. That is also a serial hybrid, and I personally am not for hybrids. I, I like the purity of a powertrain. You either have a very efficient internal combustion engine, and you do everything you can to make it efficient, or you, you make an electric vehicle, and you try to make that as efficient as possible. So you, your uh, solution is very intriguing to me, but at the same time, I drove the, um, the little Jazz, and I drove it in the city, and it uh, returned like four ish liters per 100 kilometers in very congested Bucharest traffic which is some okay. of the worst in Europe yeah so that impressed me which okay. is and your solution intrigues me so I, I want to know more um, okay. I had another question how does the system affect the the model 3's weight is it lighter or heavier than the a stock model 3 with like a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack so it's definitely lighter. so we we know for, for for our prototype we know it's about 300 kilogram between 250 yeah. 300 kilogram lighter yeah because the system itself is much lighter than uh, than uh, battery uh, so the engine has about uh, 90 kilogram the battery is about 100 kilogram of course it depends on on how big a battery is for which yeah, car you use yeah. it for this car it's definitely lighter yes um, I gathered some data here. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate it is. Mm. I didn't have time mm. to fact check yeah. it, yeah. but I found that one liter of gasoline equals nine kilowatt hours of energy, which is a lot. So a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack would be would equate to less than thirty liters of fuel. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, like a, a car with a big battery pack, like the new EQS from Mercedes, mm. Mm. that has enough energy stored in its huge battery pack that weighs six seven hundred kilos. Um, so it has as much energy as just around 30 liters of fuel. That, that intrigues me. That, that intrigues me. That I, I understand where you're going with this. I was, to be honest, I was skeptical of you, your idea first. Yeah, but the more yeah, I'm yeah. learning about it, it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. I know. Right, that, I know our readers and the viewers okay. at Inside EVs who mm -hmm. really like their Tesla are already hovering over the dislike button. But um, I think they should refrain, maybe, and mm. hear you out until the end. And we're also going to drive the vehicle today, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. So your end goal is to um, offer this powertrain solution to other manufacturers, and then they would integrate it into their range of vehicles, so you would be a third-party supplier to them. That's your goal. As our goal, we are, we are developing I mean, a patent out of it and, and give licenses. Yeah, yeah. Our goal is to find a car manufacturer who is producing cars based on this power system. Are there any interested parties? I don't want names. Yeah, no, are there there any, I cannot talk about names. I don't want true, names, but, they are but definitely are there any parties? established automakers yeah, that are in contact definitely. with you? Okay. And we have also license with car manufacturers. And my final question is, when do you think you will be able to start production? or? When will we see this system in a production vehicle? When do you estimate this to happen? The more that people get aware of the necessity of this system and also the e methanol topic in you know, a global scale, I think it gets faster and faster from today's point of view using 25, 26 days. Okay, okay, okay. That's very interesting. These were all the questions I had for you. I'm super excited to, to, to see what it, what it feels like to drive a Tesla with a little combustion engine in the front. Okay, see you in the car. Let's see the engine. I mean, more the AC than the engine, but so, so this is the engine. So it's a two-cylinder. It's a two-cylinder. Just under one liter. Yes, that's very cool. It's acoustically and thermically capsuled. And it's strictly a generator. It uh, yes. it is not connected in any way to the wheels directly. Not at all. I still still have the the, the trunk release here. <laughs> What is the emission standard for this uh, for this engine for, for for the vehicle? Is it Euro six or seven compliant? Do you know? Euro ten. Euro ten. Really? No, we are. We are. We are so uh, so we above have... Euro seven at least. Above Euro seven. Okay. Because okay. We're running uh, about twenty. Uh, we have CO two emissions about forty six gram per kilometer. Uh, if you see that because we have just two liter per one hundred kilometer. So this is two point zero one liter per one hundred kilometer. So the battery is no longer in the floor of the vehicle. Yeah, exactly. So this is oh, sorry, not battery tank. 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 Yes. Yes, a tank. This is just this. Uh, this is for the prototype car. Yes. Okay. Here. So and, and uh, where do you uh, put the fuel in? Here. We have, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't have a key here at the moment. This is bad luck. My auto is kind of. And there is no. 
there is no way of charging the vehicle externally. Of course. There so is? This is, you can give any other, here's for fill up the gasoline. Or the have the is it the right key? Yeah, this key doesn't be this. Right. This is the tank. Okay, so where where do you connect? Uh... Other side. Ah, okay. So I thought you had both of them here, which no. I thought yeah, was a really? kind of a dangerous the solution. The original model has two charger ports on both sides. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. This one has the charger on the left. So, side. so this is the original yeah. Tesla charger. What are these uh, slats here for? What? Uh, design. Just design, so they don't uh, serve a functional purpose. No. So far, it feels like a normal Tesla. That's a good thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sit low. So. You good with the mirrors or? Uh, yeah. For the engine itself, it has just 120 oh, yeah. kilowatt power. Try again. 120 kilowatt. Yeah, kilowatt. So that's 160 a, horsepower. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Okay. So it's a little bit reduced for the uh, cargo. So where, where do we go? That way. Like that way. Mm -hmm. Go back this road and then we can like, exit this way here. Another left. Yes. So will I be able to hear when the little you engine kicks in? You tell me. Okay. okay. Can I drive it uh, normally? Can I floor the gas once to yeah. see what it feels like? Sure. Okay. Yeah, there's some roads. This is, this is Germany, so I'm going to do it only to uh, 59 kilometers per hour. But well, there's some roads where you can go like above 100. So you should be right. yeah. You should be definitely able to. During my time here in Germany, I've, I've been driving an ID3 uh -huh. and uh -huh. I've been driving it maxed out whenever I've had the chance. It's 166 <laughs> kilometers per hour. Should. Yeah, obviously. Okay, so we make it right here because maybe some, some explanation for the, the charts in the middle. This is like our software for whatever we can read into battery current, battery voltage. And I think yeah. the most interesting point is to the CVG RPM, so the, the engine is called CVG. Okay. And w where is that displayed? CVG. It's a zero, okay. zero vibration generator, so you see when it starts up, you see the revs, you, you see the current, and you see the lambda for the, um, what's the word in English? Try it in German. Um, Verbrennungsgemisch. Yeah, I'm not helping. <laughs> I tried, yeah, I tried. Not so important. Just so uh, you can combust, uh, the combustion rate with air and, and fuel. Fuel-air mixture. Exactly, fuel. that's what I was looking okay. for. So far this feels normal. I would say. Maybe there's a bit more uh, interior noise than in a normal Model 3? Yeah, it could be. Maybe we have different yeah. feet on it. No, maybe it's just tire noise. I can't tire noise. Oh, it could be tire noise. Yeah, it could be, yeah. So far it feels very Tesla-esque. And even though you said the software is your own, it's still a te Tesla-esque. Yeah, I mean the so, the so, whole, so this part the is interface still Tesla. is pretty much the same. This is just so, like is this a, a Tesla access, or is this your this is, this is Tesla? This so is we, Tesla. So this is your own. All we do is we access the browser mm -hmm. and we have a web page that uh, lets us oh, access the Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. how it works. Okay, what's going on? The engine still hasn't started. No, it starts oh. above uh, 60 to 65 kph. kph. Okay. As it depends on this, uh, it depends yeah. on how you. Does uh, it start when you floor the, the go pedal and it, um, it's to, supply, to supply the necessary current to keep the battery topped up? No. Or only when the state of charge drops to a certain level? When the state of charge is below 80% and you go above 65 for a period longer than two seconds, okay. it starts up. And if you go below 65, it shuts down again. Got it, got it, got it. So what about the cell temperature? Is uh, 37 degrees... Uh, it's the battery. Yeah. Is it good? Is it the ideal temperature? Where, where should it sit? Where that's, a good, that's a good question. I'm no technician. Maybe Torsten knows. No, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, a, so it's, it's a blue is definitely, but it's about 70. So, so it's, so it's color, so dependent it's on color? Yeah. So okay. Colors, yeah. It, as long as it's not a water temperature, this is like you have it in a normal car. Yeah, yeah. You just see it's, it's yellow and red. But the center, this is an air-cooled battery here inside. So the new one is battery. Also, the new the other one for the Model Y is mm -hmm. water-cooled. Okay. Vacuum. Technology. And it's fine. Yeah, yeah. no, it's fine. This is, it's a Have you tested this um, passive cooling system in uh, extreme temperatures, or in high and low temperatures? 
as we did because we did test drives during the winter time. Mm -hmm. We did test drives also in hot summer, and we have a test uh, strecke in Austria mm -hmm. where we go all, all up to the hills, okay, up to 2,400 meters, oh, wow. up and down, and highway and city. And so this is a, I say it's an inofficial test drive, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a way where we can test a real test drive uh, uh, with all three. Uh, situations like uh, country roads, city and mountains. Yeah, and I think another key is that regarding, regardless of the... Do I make it right here? Uh, is, no, is there a right? Just, oh, no, there's no right here. I saw the arrows on the road. I think regardless of the outside temperature, the point is the, the battery is capsulated thermically. Yeah. So all we do is pretty much keep the battery at the perfect temperature, like mm -hmm. regardless of the outside temperature. Mm -hmm. Got it. Do you think uh, not having active cooling for the battery affects the um, the cells long term? If they if the the temperature constantly varies, well, they start to lose capacity. Definitely, this is the reason why we have this vacuum. Watching, so so, so so in the future you won't have air cooled batteries. This is just for this particular uh, development prototype. Let's say. Yes. Got it. It's not for both air cooled and water cooled battery. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the future, but the new technology for the prototype has really water cooled because you can keep the Easier, uh, so level. Maybe just to interrupt. So now the the CVG started up. Yeah, did I, feel, I said. Did you yeah, feel yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I did. I wanted to say I did, but I would be lying. <laughs> I don't want to lie. Okay. I didn't feel it. Yeah. I mean, if you see it starting up, that definitely changes the. I, 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 I saw the graph with the corner of my eye, and I, I I wanted to bring it up, but you did first. So does the. Uh, so I made a, a little change in the chart with the RPM. It yeah. went up a little bit. So it is uh, dependent on how yeah, far so you floored it. So if yeah. you take uh, peak power, the revs yeah. go up a bit. But for um, average um, power usage, the revs stay the same. You have lambda at this we right here, lambda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, optimal combustion. Yeah, yeah. Optimal combustion ratio. And yes, the CVG, the RPM varies a bit, but I can see it that. usually stays around 1500. Okay, okay. So it, it operates at an optimal point, at like around 45, 45, 44, 45% um, efficiency. Okay. How did you manage to um, isolate the, vibra the vehicle from the vibrations of a, a two cylinder engine, which is notorious for um, not being balanced? Um, you know, it shakes. The vehicle is not isolated from the vibrations. The engine itself does not yeah. generate vibrations. How come? It's this CVG stands for Zero Vibration Generator. Okay, explain um, how that works, if you please, just basically. So it's a two-cylinder engine. You have uh, two counterclockwise rotating. balancing rota shafts or something? You have balancing shafts. Oh, okay. You have counterclockwise uh, rotating. And this or cancels out the... Exactly, it cancels okay. out um, all the motions, all the rotations. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, that's what it. For for more technical detail into that, uh, no, I will uh, uh, read your press release. I will read your press release uh, and maybe add some. Um, it's already explained in the film, yeah, the video. Okay, so you can see all the details. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will just. I'll, this right here, go to the I will use your animation. So friends. you can you can floor it a bit if you want okay. to. Yeah, I think we should break here. <laughs> this is a smart idea. Maybe. We have to go out here the next. Oh, the next one. Ah, take the next Can one. I move on the to the left lane? Yeah, sure, if you want to. But you're still under 20, so. Yeah, yeah, we're still under. <laughs> What's the top speed? Uh, 160. Okay. For this car. Okay. Are you planning to increase it, or I, I so was assume it, it will be from a, a application to application, I assume. Uh, we have it. This is two topics. We have 150 kilometers. If you now, I hear the engine. I, I hear it, but I don't feel it. Or maybe I do a little bit. Now that the revs are higher. Yeah. And you have to imagine this is a prototype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. No, so there's, so there's no, I'm still no very, I'm still very impressed by the fact uh, that the okay. two-cylinder engine is this smooth. I associate them with the kind of thing, yeah. you know. <laughs> okay. All right, so. so we take the next exit. Well, the revs dropped suddenly. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, which exit? On yeah, we take the next one. Okay. So, I mean, not the, uh, not the restaurant or gas station, but the next one. Afterward? Yes. Okay.
I'll stick to this lane. Yes. Yeah, I think the, the main point where people have to make a change of mind is stop thinking about in, internal combustion and oh, we burn fossil fuels. I think the point is, okay, we have a, a liquid battery on board and we have a generator on board. It's not yeah. a, an engine like in a regular car. The electricity out of the, the plug in the wall has to be produced somewhere. If you yes. produce it in the car or whether in Poland with coal, doesn't make Poland that. is very bad. Exactly, but Germany, for for instance, I think they use around thirty percent of their electricity from coal, coal, coal energy. So in, in Romania, fact, we have a lot of uh, green energy. Yeah, in so Austria as lucky. well, where we from? We're lucky. Well, we like, have a lot of uh, hydroelectric power, and uh, solar and wind are yeah. shooting up. No, which is good. Which yeah, is po Poland is very bad in Europe for for. So uh, America, right? So yeah, the engine right. stops. Did it stop? Yeah, no, it stopped. It stopped, right? Yeah. yeah, there it is. So right here. Yes. Where, I mean, I and even, but even in Germany, where you have 30% of, of coal energy, yeah. it's better to drive with this powertrain with two liters of gasoline per 100 kilometers than having an electric car. So what is the official uh, efficiency figure that you advertise? 2.1 or is it two? Real, real world is 2.1, 2.2. But okay. And the NEDC cycle is uh, uh, around one liter. Yeah, but the NEDC cycle is not realistic. That's why yeah, but, we don't yeah, use it exactly. anymore. Is this the... Uh, X7? That was an X. Was it the X8? Probably. I'll, I'll check the was, footage. I thought it was the, the Maserati. Yes. No, no, no. It was the BMW. Was I recognize the BMW, BMW camouflage yeah. anywhere. So we go s straight over here, like the second exit. So again, it started and yeah. shut shut off. Yeah. What you hear is maybe is only the exhaust and sound. So it's just acoustic. Could you, do you think you could make it even quieter? Yeah, yeah definitely. I think so. I mean, well, with acoustic, but with, with, with the professional acoustics, uh, which you have not done yet. Hands. This is no, just no, a basic hands. exhaust. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. This is a basic exhaust. So that we know from as we, we we are in contact with OEMs, and we know once uh, the technical engineers go over the engine and the full system itself, we assure that you cannot hear anything. Uh, this is this is uh, at the moment this is a sample. Uh, so as soon as this is a zero production, it goes in zero production. It's, uh, totally different. No, I think the, the vehicle it's makes just, sense. Even I, I understand that it's um, still a development vehicle and it's nowhere near final. But if it, if it can achieve the um, the efficiency rating that you that you say, it makes a lot of sense. I wanted to hear the uh, the engine rev higher. I guess we can do 105. Yeah, revs are rising. Yeah. Okay. It's still not intrusive for a. Um, an engine with a placeholder exhaust. Uh, straight ahead? One, one second, wait. I will stop anyway. Yeah, yeah just keep it straight. I mean, if you want to continue, we can just keep it straight because the entrance of the blue lane is like right in front no, of there. No, no, it's fine. I'm going to do a launch now from this okay. set of traffic lights. So brace yourselves. All, all 160 horsepower. By the way, it's still rear-wheel drive, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. I forgot to ask about it's that. It's easier to, to build a prototype. Yeah, I don't understand why all these manufacturers that are making ground uh, electric ve vehicles from the ground up are still putting the motor in the front. It makes no sense. Mm. Because you, if you don't have any, any power going to the front wheels, mm. you can uh, turn them more, you can uh, have more lock. Yeah, just that, the overall drivability is much better. Yeah, it, it makes sense. And the, the handling is better if you... Yeah. Just, just have the front wheels handle steering and not also putting power down. Yeah, it the handling experience uh, is better. I have a background in motor racing, so I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm just a nerdy enthusiast. Okay, <laughs> we're breaking the law in Germany, which is a very bad place to break the law. Do you make it right here? Not yet. Oh uh, no. Oh no. Yeah, my bad. We take gates 14, I think, or 13. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. There's some blue flags and it says blue lane and thing, everything in there. So. Okay. Uh, I'm not spider have I done. Okay. I literally came to me. <laughs> what is that? It looks Chinesey. Oh, we should have taken that one. Uh, can you make it left? Yeah, oh, sorry. Can you make yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, my bad. I was paying attention to the three-wheeler thing. <laughs> yeah, me too.